Hello, we're going to be doing a short video um, helping you to understand the mechanism of normal labour. Um, we've got the mum represented by the pelvis, so the mum is supine, um, and we've got the foetus entering the, entering the pelvis in the right occipito anterior ROA position. At some point towards the end of pregnancy, or sometimes in early labour, the foetal head will enter the inlet of the maternal pelvis, and it does so with a sagittal suture of the foetal head in the transverse diameter of the maternal pelvis. As labour progresses and contractions get stronger, we have something called foetal axis pressure, which is where the pressure of the uterine contractions pushes down on the foetal sacrum, and it makes the baby's head flex which results in the smallest diameter of the fetal head presenting, and that's the suboccipitopragmatic diameter. As labour progresses, we get increased pressure down the fetal axis caused by increasing strength of uterine contractions. This causes descent of the fetus through the maternal pelvis. As the occiput meets the resistance of the maternal pelvic floor, we get a rotation causing due to the shape of the maternal floor and it causes the foetal occiput to rotate anteriorly by one eighth. However, it's very important to note that the shoulders do not rotate through the same one eighth and this results in some a misalignment between the foetal shoulders and the foetal head. As labour progresses and we get increasing foetal descent, the occiput will slip beneath the suprapubic arch and this is when crowning can occur. The foetal head pivots on the suboccipital region and extends and this releases the syncyput, the face and the chin which sweep the perineum. The foetal head is now free to do something called restitution. Restitution is where the foetal head and the foetal shoulders realign. There is the untwisting of that one-eighth rotation. At the same time, we get increasing descent of the foetus, and now the anterior shoulder meets the resistance of the pelvic floor, and that too rotates anteriorly one-eighth. We get increasing descent, and the anterior shoulder sweeps underneath the pubic arch, and the posterior shoulder slips into the curve of caris or the hollow of the sacrum. As it does so, we get lateral flexion of the foetus and the baby is born by lateral flexion. And this is known as the mechanism of normal labour. This video has demonstrated the mechanism of normal labour for a baby in the ROA position.